Hey YouTube, it's Christy from Joy Fiber Art. I wanted to do a really quick video today on how to read a weaving draft if you don't have foot treadles. As you can see behind me, I have the Louette Jane loom. It's a super beautiful, lovely loom, works very well. Um, and on this loom, I have these switches that I use for, for weaving instead of foot treadles. So when I first got started, I had a general understanding of what a weaving draft was, but I could not for the life of me read how to translate a regular weaving draft with foot treadles into this. So I wanted to do a really quick tutorial to help you uh, if you're in that same situation. If you have a floor loom with foot treadles, then you're in a bit of a different situation. But in this case, each one of these switches represents one of my shafts. So it's a little bit different in how you get set up. So here you go, I hope you find this helpful. This is a basic weaving draft. The most important things when you look at this are these boxes and these boxes, and most importantly, this box right here. So these are your warp threads, and these are your weft threads, and this is how you're gonna come up with the pattern that will create what this looks like when you're weaving. So each one of these lines is a shaft on your loom. So you can see there's four different ones on this. This is assuming you have a four shaft loom. I have an eight shaft loom, but I'm in this case, I'm gonna set it up with just four. So you, the very first thing you're gonna do when you're setting up your loom is, draw, is set these in the correct order. If you don't do that, you're not gonna get this pattern. So just make sure when you start that you're counting these out carefully. This over here, these are your weft threads. So this is what you're going to put through your warp threads to create this pattern. This box is traditionally used for people that have foot treadles. So as you're setting up your treadles, you would do, uh, this is, would be your first treadle, second treadle, third treadle, fourth treadle. And as you're going through your pattern, you're basically just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it's very easy. When you don't have foot treadles, you have to do this a little differently. So this is how I do it. I'm sure there are lots of good ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. So I number my boxes. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna write down on a post-it note which block boxes are blocked in. So in this case, this is one and two. So I'll write one and two. The next line is two and three two and three, three and four, and then the next one is one and four. Then I'm gonna look here, and this is gonna tell me in which order I'm gonna put each one of these sections. So this one's really easy, obviously, because we were just counting up one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four is your pattern. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Makes it really easy as you're going along. If this, let's say for example, this goes this way and has, or it has a different pattern, all you're basically gonna do is write down the one for the correct box. So this is box one, that's one, two. This is box two, that's two, three. This is box three, three, four. And box four, one, four. My weft threads are kind of going in this W shape that's alternating. So I'm really only focused on those two lines of pattern because that's what repeats regularly. So this side here is the first W and then this is the, the second W pattern. So same type of thing, just a more complex version. So I take my post-it note and I stick it up here so that it's right in front of me and I know what I'm doing. And then essentially, very easy, I'm gonna start with the first one. I'm gonna flip these two. I'm going to run my shuttle through, then I'm going to go to the next one, which is 2-3, I'm going to beat, shuttle, and we're going to go to the next one, 3-4, and then 1-4, And that's it, it's really straightforward. If your pattern is more complicated, you might want to put little reminders for yourself. Sometimes I've had ones that fill up most of my post-it note. 
Uh, so you might want to have a little marker where you know where to stop or what I would do is I'd always only stop at the end so that if I pick back up again and I'm somewhere in the middle, I might not know where I'm supposed to be on the pattern. So it's very helpful, especially if you have recurring numbers that are together. Uh, so here's an example of a different one. So see, I've got three, four a number of times on there. So I would never want to stop at a three, four, so I wouldn't know which one I'm on when I start up again. So you can see that it's creating this diagonal pattern here as we go along. So this is 12, but that is essentially how you're going to read and use a weaving draft without treadles.